All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> What's good, everybody? Back at it with another one. Hope you guys are doing good. So, guys, <laughs> I was just watching a video. Um, there's this pastor that I watch online on YouTube. He's called David Lean. And uh, his channel on YouTube, you can go check him out if you want to. His channel on YouTube is called Christ Forgiveness. Um, I don't know if I should show it to you guys here real quick. I'll just put, I'll just link it down actually. Actually, let me go ahead and show it to you guys. I don't want to link it down. I'm not going to do a lot of editing on this video. So, um, Christ Forgiveness. That's his channel right there. You guys can see Christ forgiveness that's him and that's the actual video that I just came from watching right and from that video it is just surprising of how some people or at least the person that he was talking to in that video could not understand could not come to terms with basic concepts like a good question that he was asking that dude right there was in your life at any point do you think that you need person outside of yourself do you think that you need anybody outside of yourself in your life for any and whatever reason this person could not answer like could not really just say yes or no he could not answer that question because I don't know if he could not understand it or he was avoiding to answer the question because him answering the question, uh, it was going to lead David Lynn to um, prove to him that he needs God, somebody who is higher than him. He was asking him, when you get sick, you need somebody outside of yourself, right? You need a doctor. Uh, when you, when you, when you, um, what, what's another example he said? Um, when you need food, you need, you, you need something. You need the grocery store to go get you some food so you can eat. It's like a concept like that. And he could, he could not even answer a question that, um, oh, I'm sorry, I got too close to the, to the mic. <laughs> but he could not, um, he could not. He could not acknowledge that there was a this higher and a lower knowledge, right? He could not acknowledge that he could not come to terms that this higher information and this lower information, right? He could not come to terms with that. So David Lynn was telling him like, "There's grades, right? There's first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, right? And there's different levels of math. There's a higher math and there's a lower math." Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. You cannot give a class, uh, somebody who's in the first grade a higher math, which is in like a fifth or even a third grade math. They, they cannot decipher it. They, can, they don't understand it. They just don't know. They only know what they're being taught, their first grade level, right? So the, the thing was, he was like, you guys should really just go watch it. But what I was going to say is, I hope sometimes... I know I have viewers, right? And I'm not judging. But I know I have viewers. And everybody has a different level of understanding. So I'm trying to approach my, I would say, teaching. I would say I'm teaching, right? Yeah, I am teaching. I am preaching, actually. So that's teaching. I would say yeah, in me teaching or preaching, I hope that uh, how I'm talking, somebody understands me, right? I, I want the person who has the lowest understanding that's watching me to be able to understand what I'm saying. I don't want to think that everything I say makes sense, but at the same time, somebody might not get what I'm saying, you know? So that kind of hurts me. So um, that's to say, if I be saying something, if I say something in, in my videos that you don't agree with or you do not understand, please. Feel free to comment. Let me know. Let me know that this does not make sense or I disagree with this or you're wrong at this. Hey, I'm always open for correction. I do not know everything. 
I know there's higher knowledge above me that and there's knowledge I do not know. There's higher education that I do not have. There is higher there's just higher there's something higher than me that I do not that I have a limit. That's what I'm trying to say. I have a limit. So if you think you know better or you think or you have a different opinion of what I'm saying, feel free to let me know and I will share. And we can we can communicate and see what where we can come to ground at, right? Does that make sense? So um yeah guys, cause uh, I feel I feel I, I mean like from watching that video, I felt like I I was approaching my videos from an from an understanding that everybody should get this. I was coming from an understanding that who cannot get what I'm saying, right? Like it's basic English, um, and. Me talking about God, I, I I feel like it's basic knowledge, which I know is not true because I know a lot of people are out here seeking God. A lot of people don't know God. A lot of people disagree with simply just the Bible stories or they just think it's a fiction of an imagination or they think it's, a, it's just another story, right? A lot of people don't agree with spiritual spiritual things a lot of people don't i know that now i'm coming to really understand that so i'm trying to you know be accessible right not just um seclude myself to a certain group of people that i think are only gonna get me and uh leave these other people that might be seeking some knowledge that i'm looking for or have more knowledge than i have Hope I'm not rambling too much. But anyways, that, that that's that guys. That's that. If you do not under if you do not agree with me with anything that I say, or you do not understand what I say, let me know. Anyways, that being that, um I think this should just be a video of itself, right? Or not. Nah. Actually no, nah. I'm gonna keep on going. The main the main reason why I pressed the re the record button was I wanted to share. A Bible verse that I just came across and I loved it. It's not just a Bible verse, but it's like a passage, right? And this is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 46. We're going to start from verse 3, right? Grab your Bibles, open your books up to the book of Isaiah, chapter 3, chapter 46, verse 3. And guys, the main reason why I always rely on the Bible, or like I go back to the Bible to base whatever I'm teaching is because, first of all, we're talking about God here. And we know that this, the Bible, is the Word of God, right? This is the Word of God that we've been given. And through studying this, we, know, we get to know God, right? Yes. So, Isaiah 46 verse 3. And it reads, we're going to read from verse 3 to 10. Or if it's possible, I believe we could keep going, actually. We'll go to verse 13, actually. Yeah. Verse 3, it reads, listen to me, you descendants of Jacob. Listen to me, you descendants of Jacob, all remnant of the people of Israel. You guys know who the descendants of Jacob are? Jacob had 12 children, ch children, right? And the children became the tribes of Israel. So, and this is in our quotation marks. And when something is in quotation marks in the Bible, that's God speaking. Or when something is in red, in some Bible that's painted red, that's God's word, right? So, listen to me, you descendants of Jacob, the Israelites. Those are the Israelites. And for now... um, to my understanding or to my from my research the israelites in this point in time are the blacks the hispanics and the native americans those are the israelites the blacks the hispanics and the native americans if you don't believe god has a chosen people right god chose the people of Israel, Israel, the Israelites, right? Those are his chosen people. Those are the people who he mainly sent his son first 
to go deliver them from their sin. I know this is a sensitive topic. Some might say, oh, Jesus came to save everybody. Some might say, God ha- doesn't have a chosen people. He's God for everybody. He is a God for everybody. He's God for the living, for the dead. He is God over everybody. He is the one true and living God. I agree with that. But God has his chosen people. And in the Bible, he speaks a lot to his chosen people, which are the people of Israel. And the Israelites at this time are the blacks, the Hispanics, and the Native Americans. And this is a message to them. Let's keep reading. You whom I have upheld since your birth and have carried since you were born. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Right? God is talking to you, Israelite. He says, You who he he, he, he upheld you ever since birth. Right? And he has carried you since you were born. Even to your old age and gray hairs, even when you get so old, super old, he is still him. I am he. I am he who will sustain you. He will sustain you ever since you were born to your gray hairs. He will sustain you, right? I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. With whom? Will you compare me or count me equal? Who else can you put to the level of God? Who else can you compare with God? To whom will you liken me that may be compared? Nobody. Some pour out gold from their bags and wear out silvers on the scales and hire a goldsmith to make it into a god and they bow down and worship it. Right, like that story of Israel, the Israelites in the desert, uh, when when Moses went to the no 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 when Moses went to get the commandments, um, the Israelites asked this. There was somebody who Moses left in charge. I don't remember the name, guys, but the Israelites asked this person to make them a god, right? And uh, the Israelites took their golds, all the golds that they got from the land of Egypt. They took their golds and. They made they, they 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 made a calf and they started worshiping that go that calf right and then when Moses came from the mountain with the ten commandments that God had given him, he saw that those Israelites were worshiping a golden calf and he got mad and he dropped I think I don't know if he threw it down I think he threw down the ten commandments and he broke it into half that's why there's two tablets it was originally like a book and it broke into half that's the story of the Israelites. But uh, that's to just that, that's I think that I believe that's to say that some people right now they form gods of their own and try to worship them. People start worshiping the universe. People start worshiping the sun, the stars. People start worshiping all these the constellations. These are these are all higher, you know, higher knowledges that we do not have that we seek. That we see and we're like, oh, that's a higher knowledge. And because the universe, the universe is tremendous. Some might, my, some might mistake it for God because it's of a higher um, knowledge than they are. So they worship that because that's the highest knowledge that they know of. But we know that God created the universe from just a command, right? Um, so, yeah, um, people worship. Um, celebrities right just because of the, they are of a higher stature than them so they see them as a god and they, so whoever you see higher than you at whatever level you see it as you're gonna take them as your god <sighs> so yeah let's keep let's keep it let's keep it going they lift, this is chapter 46, verse 7. They lift it to their shoulders and carry it. They set it up in its place and there it stands. From that spot it cannot move. 
even though someone carries out to even though someone cries out to it it cannot answer it cannot save them from their troubles right verse 8 remember this keep it in mind take it to heart you rebels he's calling the israelite people the rebels and we know that um there's another verse i cannot pinpoint it right now guys but hmm, let me really try and can i find it let me really try and find it yes please god help me help me find it mm. we found it guys ezekiel chapter 3 verse 8 ezekiel chapter 3 verse 8 thank you god thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you ezekiel chapter 3 verse 8 open your books up to the book of ezekiel chapter 3 verse 8 all right ezekiel chapter 3 verse 8 and it reads but i will make you as a yielding and hardened as they are i will make your forehead like the hard stone harder than flint do not be afraid of them or be terrified by them, though they are a rebellious people. And he's talking about the Israelites too again. In this book he says how he talks about how unyielding and hardened the Israelite people are, how their foreheads are harder than stone, and how rebellious they are. This is the people of Israel. Right? And when we go back, the, past, the, the verse that we we're just reading says, Remember this, keep it in mind, take it to heart, you rebels. The Israeli people are rebels, but we are hard headed. We're hard headed people. We know the word of God. We know God. We know about Him. But we choose not to follow Him sometimes. We choose to disobey Him most of the time. And this brings us trouble. He, pu he, he punishes us for this. He puts us through um, slavery. He, he, he gives us to our enemies to be slavery because of disobeying. And the Bible also says that person who knows better and heads on to sin, they get a harder whipping than the person who does not know better and still sins. So if you know better and you know the right way, but you choose to go the other way, your consequences are going to be more than the person who does not know better right so yeah let's keep on reading remember the former things those of long ago i am god and there is no other i am god and there is none like me verse 10 i make known the ends from the beginning from ancient times what is still to come that's in the bible and he just tells you what he says in the Bible. In the Bible, when you read the Bible, you will know about the end from the beginning. From the beginning, which is Genesis, you will know in the beginning. And Revelation, you know, you will know what, what will happen in the end. He tells you that, right? I make known end from the beginning. From ancient times, what is still to come. Mm? This th we, everything that's in the Bible it's happening space and time this time we're in it's in the Bible though I'm not going to speculate but I know I'm not 100% sure so I'm not going to speak on it but the Bible talks about the very first the, the beginning of time and it talks to the end of time right I say my purpose will stand and I will do what I please. God does what he pleases. But at the same time, that's his purpose. His purpose stands. Right? From the east, I summon a bird of prey. From a far off land, a man to fulfill my purpose. What I have said, that I will bring about. What I have planned, that I will do. Let's repeat that one. From the east... I summon a bird of prey from a far off land, a man to fulfill my purpose. Hmm. 
what I have said that I will bring about, what I have planned that I will do. Whatever God has, whatever God has planned, it, it will happen. Nothing is gonna change it. Yo, if, if God has a plan in your life, excuse me, guys. If God has a plan in your life, if He has something set for you, it will happen, right? You might not want that thing to happen, but it will happen. It might be something good that you do not see as good, but it will happen. Right? And verse 11, the first one says that he has sent he, from the east, I summon a bird of prey from a far off land, a man to fulfill my purpose. Hmm. I believe that's his, that's his teachers, that's his the teachers of the Lord, that's somebody who comes bearing the word of God. I come bearing the word of God. That's God walking through me. I am. These are not my thoughts. I am not speaking to you what I'm thinking. No, these are the words of God. I am reading to you the word of God. And whatever I'm trying to decipher to you, it's not just my thoughts, man. This is, I'm allowing, let me not say I am allowing. God is working through me, through, and it's his will, right? So listen. Verse 12, and he says, listen to me, you stubborn hearted, you who are now far from my righteousness. Verse 13, I am bringing my righteousness near. It is not far away and my salvation will not be delayed. Hmm. Uh. Right, I am bringing, let's repeat verse 12. Listen to me, you stubborn hearted, you who are now far from my righteousness. If you know you're not abiding in the right ways that you should be, if you know you're not following God's mindset and not following God's laws, you better listen. And now that you're here, you better listen. He is talking to you. You are far from his righteousness. That might be me as well. But he is talking to you. Right? I am bringing my righteousness near. It is not far away. And my salvation will not be delayed. I will grant salvation to Zion. My splendor to Israel. Ooh. I, will, I will grant salvation to Zion. My splendor to Israel. Let's look what splendor means. Let's let's look up splendor. Splendor. See what the Englishman dictionary talks about. Splendor, great brightness or luster, brilliancy, magnificence. Something splendid. Ah, uh, huh? great brightness or luster, brilliancy. He's going to bring great brightness. He's going to bring brilliancy to Israel. So, yeah, um, Israelites, this, this was a word meant for you straight from the words of God. And I hope you take heed. Take heed. He says he is the God who will sustain you he has made you and he will carry you he will sustain you and you will re and he will rescue you uh -huh. so yeah guys remember to follow god's ways know there is a god And know there's a righteous, there's righteous, there's a righteous way to live this world. And the only righteous way we, and the only instructions that we have, as we live on this earth, is found in this book, in the Bible. Uh, an acronym I had of the Bible. It is basic instructions before leaving earth. Bible. It is very true. These are basic instructions for us as we're living here on earth. 
and when we die during the second coming there's going to be a new earth right and in the new earth only the righteous are going to be ruling right the righteous will be ruling the person uh, um, the person with the least information will not need to be informed about god because they will know about god there was not going to be death there's not going to be distractions there's not going to be unrighteousness there's not going to be none of that so in this current world that we live in it's a world filled with evil and for us to navigate this world in a, in as in as much of in as much of a clean way as we can we need some instructions and we have been given instructions right here we have been given the ways right here so follow the ways go to your manual read your manual and follow as much as you can it's not easy because we are bound in this flesh this flesh fights against our spirit and this flesh wants things of this world things that satisfy the flesh things that satisfy you for a time but the spirit to satisfy you forever eternally so guys hope you got something from that thank you for tuning in god bless you may god open your ears to hear and may god soften your hearts so you can accept this word peace and i'm out thank you god for allowing me to speak to my people thank you for speaking through me and uh, whoever heard this message may they take heed oh god and may they take action thank you my father In jesus name that i'm praying amen amen